Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Kumquat Marmalade. That's right, we're going to be using the world's smallest and most humorously named citrus fruit to make what I consider the ultimate marmalade. But there is a catch. I mean, if you thought the universe was going to let us make something this gorgeous and this delicious without a little bit of pain and suffering, well, then you just don't understand the universe because that's just not how it works. But having said that, it's really not that bad, and the results really are spectacular. So let's go ahead and get started with the star of the show, Kumquats. And by the way, a little shout out. I got these beauties from my sister-in-law, Nina, and brother-in-law, Tom. But even if you don't have any in-laws to hook you up, you can generally find these at the grocery store. And one of the things that makes the kumquat so unique is you can actually eat the whole thing, which is the most common way these are enjoyed. And if you are going to start popping these in your mouth as is, what you want to do is roll them first, either on the cutting board or between your fingers. And that's going to release all this fruit's beautiful sweet oils. See how that's glistening? And it's actually leaving a spot on the cutting board. These things just have a tremendous amount of flavorful oil. And if we take a bite of that skin, unlike most citrus, it's actually very sweet and mild and doesn't have any of that harsh bitterness you might get from something like an orange. And if we cut this in half, you can see why. It really doesn't have any of that white pith. It's basically just that sweet, fragrant skin and tangy, acidic insides. Which is why taking a bite of the whole thing is such a pleasurable experience. And yes, as you can probably see, there are seeds in these, which we will be removing as we prep these, which is the next and by far most difficult step. So what we'll do after these have been washed, of course, is cut them into quarters, and then we'll turn each quarter like this and make one more slice to remove that little bit of white membrane in the center. Then once that's been removed, we can cut these quarters into two or three smaller pieces, remove it any and all seeds we find along the way, and yes, of course, something this ridiculously tedious is optional. If we want, we could just remove the seeds from that quarter and not trim out that centerpiece and then cut it up. That's okay, it'll still work. But by doing this extra step, we remove a little bit of extra bitterness, plus the appearance is gonna be unbelievably gorgeous without any little weird white bits floating around in our perfect jelly. So personally, I definitely do that step, even though it takes what's gonna seem like an extra four hours. But I think the final product you end up with more than makes this worthwhile. So as usual, you decide. You are the boss of how your kumquat marmalade gets made. But anyway, we're gonna painstakingly work our way through those kumquats, at which point we can transfer all that into a saucepan and add the rest of the ingredients. And there's only a couple. Notwithstanding all that knife work, this really is a simple recipe. So to our kumquats, we're gonna add one lemon, both the zest and the juice. And it sounds obvious, but you always wanna remove that zest before you juice your lemon. That just makes sense for several reasons. So we will add some zest and some freshly squeezed lemon juice. And then after that, we'll go ahead and add some white sugar. And my favorite part of this video will be reading the comments afterwards where people write, man, that's a lot of sugar. And that's because it's so dumb. I mean, anytime you're making a jam or a preserve or a marmalade, you need a lot of sugar. That's the deal. So we'll go ahead and we'll add a totally appropriate amount of sugar, followed by, believe it or not, a tiny pinch of cayenne. Don't worry, no one's going to taste it. But if it's not there, it won't be the same. And then I'm also going to toss in one whole star anise, although technically I guess that's five-eighths of a star anise. But anyway, we'll round up, and then we will finish this up with a cup of cold, fresh water, and that is it. We'll take a spatula or a whisk and mix that up. And if we wanted, we could start cooking this marmalade right now, but we don't. Before we cook this, we're going to let this sit for a couple hours out at room temperature, or even overnight in the fridge, to what we call in the business, macerate. And yes, I did pronounce that slowly and carefully. And why exactly is it important to macerate that for a couple hours before we start cooking? I'm going to be honest, I'm not exactly sure. But that's how I learned to do it, and instinctively it seems right to me. And if you can't trust your instincts, what can you trust? So I did cover mine and let it sit on the counter for a couple hours, at which point we can proceed. And all that means is we're going to bring this up to a simmer on medium-high heat, stirring occasionally. And then what we'll do once that starts bubbling pretty good, we will back the heat down to medium. And we will continue cooking stirring until this mixture reduces and thickens up. And other than stirring it once in a while, and of course keeping your eye on it, there's really not a lot you got to do here. Just let it cook, stir it occasionally. Although having said that, one thing I do like to do after it's cooked for about 10 minutes is pull out that star anise. I really do love the flavor it imparts, but I'm always afraid it's going to be too strong. So I did go ahead and pull that out. And by the way, besides the star anise, you could also use a cinnamon stick instead. That's very nice in this. But anyway, like I said, we're going to continue cooking on medium, stirring often until our mixture thickens up and sort of looks like this. 
In one visual clue, you're getting very close. You see how when I stir and drag that spatula across the bottom, how you can see that stainless steel for like half a second? That means I was getting close. So I gave mine another minute until I thought it was perfect, at which point it looked exactly like this. And again, watch how when we drag this spatula, you can see the bottom for a moment. That is done. And at that point, we can turn off the heat and let it cool down for a few minutes before we transfer it into some kind of jar. And by the way, if you're one of these people that enjoys getting temperatures for things, this was about 215 to 220 Fahrenheit when it was done. And we'll talk a little bit about that on the blog. But bottom line, we want to continue cooking that mixture until it looks and feels like this. And then generally, I like to let it sit for about 5 or 10 minutes before transferring it still warm into some kind of appropriate container. I would say some kind of clean and or sterilized jar would be a great choice. And look at that gorgeous color. I mean, I don't like to brag. Well, actually, that's not true. I do enjoy it sometimes. But that, my friends, is one incredibly colored marmalade. Just absolutely stunning. And the taste is equally impressive. Even warm, which is not how you want to taste marmalade. So we're going to want to let this cool down to room temp, and then pop that in the fridge until thoroughly chilled. So that's what I did. And then 24 hours later, I was ready to enjoy it. So let's cue croissant. And we will open this up and see how we did. And because kumquats contain a lot of natural pectin, you'll see this is really going to tighten up, and we will have achieved that beautiful classic marmalade texture. Check it out. That is just absolutely beautiful. And it seems impossible because of how stunning this is, but it really does taste as good as it looks. Just a beautiful balance of sweet and tangy, with just some very subtle notes of bitterness in the background. As I said in the intro, I really do think kumquats make the ultimate marmalade. And of course, this buttery croissant doesn't hurt. Although really, now that I think about it, we probably should have served this on an English muffin, since that is where marmalade originates from, where I believe it was invented by Mary Poppins, if I'm not mistaken. But you know what, I only took a couple semesters of British culinary history, so I'm really not sure about that. But what I am sure about is that you should go out and find some kumquats and give this amazing marmalade recipe a try very soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.